All right. Well, it's 1.29. Welcome, everybody. We'll just uh, take one more minute to see if anybody comes in a little bit late. You can go to rodsurl.com slash media to download the slides for today. There's not a lot of them. This is a demo. Um, I would love to spend the time and actually do this with you, but uh, it just takes a while. Um, it actually doesn't take a while if it's your site and you know, you know what you're wanting me to do, but to get everybody spun up with new sites and things is a little bit difficult for this. So the slides will give you the overview of what I've done um, and give you some insight. And at the end, I've got a whole video series on this and a 25% discount at OS Training that I'll share with you as well. Um, but let's, uh, let's get started at, uh, well, it says 129 up there, so we'll wait just one more minute to actually start. All right, I've got 130. My name's Rod Martin, thanks for coming today. I represent OS Training. Open Source Training is a training company that has been doing WordPress, Joomla, and Drupal training since before, oh wow, since 2008. Steve Bird started the company. I joined the company in 2011 and started doing Drupal training all over the world. For a while there, I was flying about 80,000 miles a year, doing mostly, almost all Drupal training, uh, literally everywhere. Uh, taught at all of the Drupal cons from Chicago right through till, um, well, not quite to COVID, but just almost to COVID. And uh, it's been a real privilege. There's a lot of, uh, I've produced a bunch of videos through the years, and I'll share some of those with you as we go today. This is a site building class. So there's no custom code here, and it's all done with core and contributed modules. I'm pretty passionate about the media manager. In fact, the last time I taught this, one of the uh, core contributors and um, maintainers of the media module was in the room, sitting in the back, getting more and more frustrated as I talked. <laughs> and I'm thinking, I don't know who this guy is, but he's clearly not happy. Well, it turns out that he was just a little frustrated because of all the work we had to do to make it what we wanted it to be, at least what I wanted it to be. And we had the best conversation after, and, and we chatted several times, and uh, it's really great. Uh, and that's one of the things I love about the Drupal community in general. The Drupal community is awesome for ideas and pushing the envelope in some ways. So this is Site Building 101 um, and all core and contributed modules. A little bit about me again, I've been teaching Drupal since 2011. I live in the thriving metropolis of Dillsboro, Indiana. Uh, it is a hick town outside of Cincinnati, Ohio. Uh, that's the whole town right there. Um, and uh, it's a lot, and I live, I live a mile and a half outside of town. Um, I play ice hockey a couple of times a week because I grew up in Toronto. And so I drive an hour to, to Cincinnati, play ice hockey. This is a Drupal 8 jersey I won at DrupalCon LA. Uh, the guys were raffling it off. And I said, you guys should get, give this jersey to somebody who will actually wear it and use it and wear it at DrupalCon. And they said, well, it's a, it's a raffle. You might win, you might not. Sure enough, the next morning I get the call, Rod, you won the raffle. So I, I wore the jersey for the rest of the week. Um, I, wrote a, I ride a Goldwyn pretty much everywhere I go. This was just this week coming down here at the Dragon's Tail. There's actual photographers that sit on the side of the road and take your picture. It's pretty cool. All right. Here's the goal for this session. And I'm going to leave... Uh, hopefully leave a good amount of time for questions, but ask your questions as we go. Uh, and if you have suggestions, feel free. Uh, I don't certainly claim to be, you know, all-encompassing wise about the media module. Uh, and, and I was actually had did this one time at uh, Drupal Camp New England, and one of the, and I was talking about a frustration I had, and the guy, one of the guys in the room said, "Oh yeah, you just click there." Oh my goodness, I was so embarrassed. So feel free to embarrass me by pointing out something that I don't know. Uh, creating a digital asset management system with advanced media settings using only core and contributed modules. So that's what we're trying to do. I'm, I'm, I teach site building. I love site builders. I love Dries' concept of the um, ambitious site builder. And if you haven't looked that up or heard that term before, he's been using it now for several years. And this is kind of what I'm passionate about when it comes to the, not only the media manager, but site building in general. So here's why we want to do this. Media is in core. Uh, I'm a big believer in using what's in core, and it's going to be supported and developed. 
Again, that ambitious site builder idea, the link to his blog, original blog post is there. But he talked about this, he's talked about it at every DrupalCon since, including Pittsburgh. So many site builders and developers don't go the extra mile. This is a pet peeve of mine, so let me rant for just a moment. I do work for uh, three different development companies and do the training for them. Um, <clears throat> I do development work or training work for Acquia, for Promet Source, uh, for OS Training, and another company called Taito Learning. But sometimes I come across sites that have been built where the developer or the site builder hasn't gone the extra mile to just provide what I would consider good basic site ceiling. Like not installing the Linkit module. Like, are you kidding? Why would you not install the Linkit module so people can link? So this came up in a conversation not too uh, about a year ago where they didn't even replace the file image link in the WYSIWYG editor to use the media manager. Uh, I, so we had the conversation. I said, you need to come up with a standardized approach at least to media in all of the sites you're building so that your, the people you're handing these sites off to get the best user experience. So that's kind of how this got birthed. The modules we're gonna to use today, media, media library, focal point and scale, uh, focal point and the crop API. I'm gonna recommend IEK as an additional, I, I've got the slides, you can have all these slides. You, don't, you can take pictures if you want, but you don't have to. Uh, acid injector, how many use acid injector? Oh, nobody's admitting to using acid injector. It's a wonderful module. It's a bit of a cheat, and I wouldn't, it's temporary. It says temporary there. I can't believe nobody uses acid injector. All right, media entity file replace, media bulk library upload, uh, and there's a couple of those. I'll, the reason I like this one is because, again, it uses core um, and no additional JavaScript. Oh, embed providers, uh, entity usage and workflows, which we're not going to touch on but I'm just assuming because you're here and you know site building, you know what Workflows does. So those are the modules I've, I've installed and turned on on the demo site that we're gonna look at when we get to it. Here's the tasks. There's a fair number of them. Whoa, why didn't that? Ah, that's weird. It's not advancing properly. So here are all the tasks. I'm gonna. We've, I've already added and enabled all the modules. The first thing I suggest is adding keywords to all of your media types, all of them, via taxonomy. So I'll show you how I did that. Then we'll talk about better image styles with focal point, scale, and crop. Uh, why use Photoshop ever again? Now, again, when I talk to uh, people, especially I do a lot of training for a large government and enterprise clients, and so I tell them to upload the biggest picture you'll ever need and let Drupal take care of the rest. You mean I don't need to upload 10 versions of a Photoshop image? No, not in Drupal, not anymore, not when you take advantage of some of these things in image styles. Um, I would add IEK in there as well um, as, as a, an advanced image style. Then we're gonna enable media in CK Editor. We'll add view modes for images and make image styles available in CK Editor. I don't know if you're familiar with that or not. We'll take a look at that. 100% responsive remote video, just using some CSS, which does and doesn't work depending on the theme that you're using, but again, it's, it's just tweaking CSS at that point. Embedding videos from anywhere uh, with OEmbed providers, uh, and uh, that's a really interesting module. Adding new media types and why you might wanna do that. Usage for media, the entity usage modules, anybody ever use that? Okay, it's awesome. And I, and then we take and update the media view to display the keywords and the links to the usage for any media for, uh, a, again, a content editor. The whole point of this exercise is to make media the central focus for all media, images, video, and um, PDFs get rid of the image upload field, frankly, that's just me, on a new site, of course, and then make that media view really, really useful for a content editor who is trying to use uh, media on their site. And then I'll briefly talk about some of the other uh, modules like bulk upload, media, repl media replace is an important one. Um, 
a lot of the enterprise and government sites that I teach, one of their requirements is the ability to replace a PDF. Well, that's what Media Replace does. It's by a guy named Brian Osborne out of Princeton, and it's a great module that does exactly that. All right? Any, have I missed anything? That you go, oh, the Media Module can do so much more, Rod, come on. Okay, well, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take a look at what I've done, and um, I'll go through it more slowly than I just did. I've done all the work already. The first time I did this, I tried to do the work in the 45 minutes. No, not so good. That was, it was a lot of work uh, in order to get that done. So, this is the uh, site building workflow, which you can download from my blog. I'll give you a link in just a bit. That talks about uh, when and why uh, we do things as we build out our sites. So everything we're talking about here on our site building workflow, a site builder, site administrator would install these modules and do that. Something weird is going on here. <laughs> like the slides are advancing at the wrong time. I don't understand. There we go. Anyway, it's gonna, I'm probably going to lose it here in a second. But um, before you get to the content types and things like that, you're going to build out this kind of a concept. To, so by the time you get to adding media into your content types to build out your... Uh, yeah, there it goes again. I don't, I'm not touching it, obviously. Anyway. It's a touch screen. It's a touch, <laughs> it's a touch That's cool. the advanced media model. That's the... <laughs> All right. Um, if you go, my blog is imrodmartin.com, and uh, the slides are here. If you just go to the blog, the home page of the blog, um, the ultimate guide to media in Drupal, the slides are here, um, and there is a video version of this from the first time I presented it. I'm hoping this one is better since we're recording it. And uh, so you can download it from there. There was something else I said about my blog, but I can't remember. Oh, the site building workflow. If you scroll down here somewhere, you can also download that site building workflow from OS Training if you are so inclined. Just so you are aware, I'm using DDEV locally. Uh, it's a brand new Drupal 10.1 site. And um, uh, the only things on it are the modules for the media manager. Uh, admin toolbar, and uh, I've added a content type called hotel listing. This is from our site building class, and I've added some fields to it. So that's kind of the background. All right? So let's dive in and take a look at the steps. Once again, the modules that I've installed, let me blow this up just a bit. The modules are, the main modules, obviously, media, focal point, and scale, and, uh, and the crop API. Uh, IEK, OEmbed providers, and um, of course we're going to use taxonomies, acid injector to uh, inject some CSS to make our videos 100% responsive, and then um, the entity usage module. Those are the modules I've already installed and turned on, and again the list is in the PDF. Okay. So, talking about keywords, I'm assuming that most of you know what taxonomy is. Structure and taxonomy. And I created a taxonomy called media keywords. And I just added a bunch of keywords as terms. Yes, I could, you know, do subterms and build that out. I, again, I didn't add a whole bunch of terms here. It doesn't really matter. But you want to add terms that make sense for the keywords, to give your keywords for your media in your website. The keywords you use are going to be different than the keywords I use. But the the trick with this part of it is, is by applying keywords to your media, you give content editors another way to find the images, videos, and PDFs that they're looking for. You can group them by keyword, that's what taxonomy does, and later on, we'll be able to filter by keyword in the media manager itself. So, the first step, add the taxonomy, and then add the fields for that taxonomy to each media type. So I added a media keywords field, and I called it media keywords. It's an entity reference. The vocabulary is media, key, media keywords. 
And then all I did for the others is I reused the field. Don't create a new field for each media type. Reuse the keywords from the first one you apply, and therefore it's the same uh, field being repeated for each of your media types. I can't tell you what a revelation that was for me the first time I did it. I, I, I realized that that's not rocket science for site builders, but again, being able to use reuse fields in Drupal is a wonderful thing, and uh, again, we were able to do that pretty easily. And so across all of your media types, you add that media keywords field. When you create a media item, of course the object is training the content editors to add keywords as they add their media. The one exception to that is bulk upload. You can't do it with bulk upload, not without doing some things, and we're sticking with contributed modules. So I've got a solution for that as well. So that's the next thing. Uh, the first thing I did is to go ahead and add all of those keywords to the media types and then start populating my media with those keywords. I use the autocomplete widget, which I love. Let's you just type a letter, make a selection, and I made it unlimited on each media item so you can have multiple keywords and you can filter by multiple keywords down the road as well. All right? So. When you think about a digital asset management system, one of the things we think about is the ease of categorizing and finding the media that we want to use. This is a great step in doing that. So that's the first thing. Next, better image styles. I'm one of, when I say better, that's just my opinion. Other image styles. I'm a huge fan of focal point scale and crop. Does anybody use that? OK, about half of you. OK. Focal point is, allows you to define the focus area on a scale and crop so that your media, or images in this case, it only applies to images, uh, can, you can create different image styles and determine where that, that scale and crop is going to be. So if you're thinking about a portrait of the Mona Lisa and you know scale and crop, where does that go? Well, right in the middle, you're going to cut off the top of her head, you could cut off her chin. With focal point scale and crop, you determine where that focus is. And it's, again, simple to install. It, de it depends on crop API. And when you install it, there is a, a setting, but you absolutely don't even need to worry about it. Uh, crop types, there it's basically set up. Uh, so really, you don't have to do any settings to use focal point scale and crop. However, you need to base your image styles on it, and you need to make one big change in the media manager. So like go to structure, media types, image, and manage form display. When you install, and I've got videos on all of this I'll share with you, so I, I know I'm gonna be going pretty quickly. The steps are install focal point. Step two, come to the image media type and change the widget from image to image focal point. That's the key. Because now, as soon as you do that, when you come over to your media manager, you'll have a little plus symbol, and that's how you determine where the focal point of your scale and crop is. Obviously, with a picture like this, the clock face of Big Ben would be gone if I made this a 1900 pixel by 350 pixel hero image, right? The clock would be gone. Well, by putting that plus symbol over top of the clock face, that's always gonna be where the focal point is. By the way, once you add all of your image styles and click on preview, all of your image styles will be presented here. So you know right off without doing anything if you've put the little plus symbol in the best place. By the way, that's the thing I didn't know about. And a guy just says, yeah, just click preview. And I went, oh, crap. How embarrassing. Was that? That was you. What are you doing back here? That was you. Why are you here again? It is a, it's a little bit better this time, I promise. But yeah, yeah, he, he's in the back going, there's that preview link. Just click on it. It's like, oh, man. I, in fact. 
the next week, I did an OS tip video on that because I'm going, I was at this Drupal camp and I'm so embarrassed, you idiot. There's a preview button. Yeah. Uh, that's so funny. I'm glad to see you again. Well, I just put you on a whim. Like, what the heck was that thing? I know, I know. And I expect that to be more obvious. Well, and I, and I, and literally, I never saw it before. Uh, so anyway, preview is your friend to make sure you've got your focal point in the right place. So that's step number two. And then after you turn on focal point and start and update the display form for your images, now you can start creating better image styles. I'm sure you've done image styles before, media image styles. And I've got a bunch of image styles going on here, and let me tell you why I've done certain things the way I've done them. So there are two aspects that I'm going to talk about. The general image styles for focal point scale and crop, like large, medium, and small, or hero image, which is one I use a lot. I also create image styles where I embed the media in the body field. And I use those distinctly and differently because the body feels kind of weird like that, right? And I'll talk about how you use these in your WYSIWYG editor in just a minute. But anywhere I create a <coughs> image style, for instance, I always name my image styles so I don't forget what they are. This one is for taxonomy hero image, 1900 by 350 focal point scale and crop. I know exactly what that's going to do six months from now when I've forgotten what everything else is. <laughs> right? So Drupal doesn't care how long these labels are. And so label them well. That's just, that's again, something I've learned through, through the years. So now I've got better image styles, and again, let me just edit this one real quickly so you can see. It is focal point, scale, and crop, and when you add scale and crop, focal point, you get these specific ones here for focal point crop and focal point scale and crop, and it then keys in on that little plus symbol. These other ones, these are IEK. IEK is a great little additional um, module. There are several modules that do advanced media manipulation for Drupal. I like this one. The reason I like this one is because it does pretty much everything I need with no additional libraries, and it just works. So, you know, I need border, corner, filter, overlay, padding, resize, or watermark. My daughter has her own photography business. The watermark is huge for her. It just does, it just works. So I like IEK, even though there are a couple of others. So go through, make your image styles using focal point, whatever other additional things you might want to use, and then you can implement them, obviously, in different places. So if I go to taxonomy, landmarks, and click on Big Ben, there, again, this is from our um, site building class, where we build a hotel content type and we use taxonomy for landmarks so people can choose the landmark they want to stay near. Anyway, there's that hero image that's been applied to the taxonomy here under structure, taxonomy, landmarks, manage display, and I'm sure you know how to do that where you just update, by the way, with the media manager, anytime you want to use image, uh, styles, you have to change it from um, media to thumbnail. I wish they'd fix this. Now, when media first came out, it was a convoluted mess to make this work. It was like six steps to make this work. Now, just change this to a thumbnail, as opposed to the rendered entity. Whoops, rendered entity. Right, so that's just going to render it as the default coming out of the media, um, the media uh, object. Now just use thumbnail, and again it can now choose any of your styles that you want. I've had um, government teams and and other teams just go, I may never use Photoshop again, because you can really really fine tune this. And Drupal makes these images the size you need. Not just the image size, but the file size, right? I, I'm sure you know this. Image styles actually produce 
versions of these images that are much, much smaller. If the a thumbnail might be 6K instead of your two megapixel <coughs> image that you uploaded. Um, and that's an amazing thing in Drupal. So, better image styles. Create the image styles that you need. Focal point will allow you to preview those, fine tune them, and uh, get them the way you want. Next thing I suggest is making sure you enable media in CK Editor. Um, I, I, I'm so not a fan of the image upload field anymore. I, I don't use it anymore, never. In fact, I turn it off if I'm on a site because they're not reusable. I can't do anything with them. So, configuration, content authoring, text formats and editors, and we're just gonna configure the basic HTML one. So here's what we did. We dragged the media manager icon down here and dragged the image icon up there. So you can't upload an image anymore in the CK editor. You can select any media from your media manager. To make sure you turn that on once you click and drag it down, you come to media and allow the user to override the default view mode. I'll tell you why in just a minute, but that's super important. You obviously, um, Im you would select embed media. And then down here at the bottom, you're going to tell what media you'd like to be able to embed it. Now I've got this other remote video, we'll get to that one in just a minute. And the view mode is selectable. Now we haven't touched that yet, but here's what I suggest that you do. What's the first thing a content editor wants to do to an image when they embed it in the body field? Move it around. Move it around and resize it. In WordPress, I can click on that and just drag it to any size I want. Now there is, by the way, a, uh, a movement in the media module to enable that for the media in the WYSIWYG editor. I don't know if that's ever gonna happen or not. But in the meantime, here's what you do. You create image styles large, medium, and small. But these image styles correlate to view modes in the media entity. And this is where it gets a little bit tricky. So let me finish with this discussion in that when I embed a media item in the WYSIWYG editor now, I'll have the ability to go editor full width, which is kind of like a hero image, large, medium, or small by doing that. Now, to make this work, I have to create these view modes. So structure, display modes, view modes, and in the media section, all I did was create these view modes. You don't, they don't actually do anything here. You're just creating the view mode. I don't know if you've ever been in this section or not, but it's like display modes for your content types. It's like the teaser display, only now we're creating them for media. So I created editor full width, large, medium, and small. And then I went to structure. By the way, this only works for images again. Media types, image, and manage display. And I just enabled the new view modes. I've already created the, the, the um, image styles. So now I click on the view mode change the format to image, and apply the image style. Now a content editor can come in, embed a media image, and choose an image style for that media. And if we apply to a little bit of CSS, it's floated to the left, you can center it, float it to the right, you can make it full width, small, medium, or large. Okay? Now I know that's a little convoluted if you've never actually done this before or thought about this before. Again, that's why I've got videos on it for you later. But, uh, and obviously this video will be available and hopefully I'm explaining it well enough. Uh, and you do that for each of the new view modes that you've created. So what does that look like? Well, let me go back to content here and uh, let's see. Well, where's my test article? It's probably... Well, we'll go to the Drupal Hotel. All right. So here's my WYSIWYG editor. And I'm going to come down here and embed 
a, an image. And once again, I'll tell you what, we'll use Big Ben because we've already seen that. And I'm going to insert select. So out of the box, it is the default view mode. But if you look here, now I have the view modes that I have defined in the view mode. I have updated in the media display, the managed display, and I've created image styles for each one of them. And I've enabled those views in the WYSIWYG editor configuration. Now they're available to me, and guess what I can do? Editor full width, or medium. And I can still float that to the right, and with Olivero at least, it'll wrap the text around it. No, I can't click and drag and make a size. Now, Aquis Site Studio, which is a very expensive product, and unless you're on Aquia Host and you can't use it anyway, they have it built in to where you can uh, define a pixel size for your images. But Drupal Core and contributed modules haven't come that far yet. It's just an Aquia thing. But now, at least you've given content editors and your design people a standardized application of media in the body field. And so style guides, you've got it made. That's a really complex piece of this session. So any questions or, I'm seeing you nod, so that's really good, but some of you are probably a little perplexed. Talk about captions a little bit. Um, you know what, I, I don't use captions, so I, I mean, you can add a caption, but that's, I. It's my, my thought or question was uh, putting a caption field on the image. Ooh. Media record somebody using a, a token in there, but I haven't actually tried it. Yeah, well, if it's a field, you can display the field. Right. Right. It's part of this. It'll automatically show up. I haven't, try, I haven't tried that. I need then, to try that. Then you may want to override it in, within the context of that content. Yeah. So, that's so there's some code. There's going to be some code there, yeah. What you would do to do that. Yeah. I haven't thought about that. All right. Thanks. One more thing. Cool. All right. We need to keep moving. Any, anything else? All right, so let me just save that. We'll take a look and see how that looks. And there you go. I use Star Trek Ipsum for my Lauren Ipsum on this one. Uh, and well, as you can see, it's nicely done in a medium size, which is what I set up in my image style. So that's adding new modes, managing image styles available in the CK editor, and again, I've got videos on all of this. What time is this over? 2.15? 2.30. Is it 2.30 or 2.15? There's a break at 2.30, so you can probably go to 2.30. Okay, thanks. All right, well then we're in great shape. 100% um, responsive remote video. So this is actually, um, I, I won't take credit for this. It was bugging me out the wazoo that I couldn't do that, so I went searching, and for sure enough, you know, Stack Exchange, somebody had figured it out. And so I used Acid Injector, and I'm shocked that none of you use Acid Injector. It is a great way of temporarily in injecting CSS and JavaScript into your site without messing with your theme. Of course, we don't tell themers this, do we? No. Um, so, here's the CSS, and I, again, I've got it for you in the, in the PDF, and I've got a link to it later on. It's, that's all it is. Now this works in Olivero. I can't vouch for other themes. It does work in Bartik. That's a, that's a joke. Come on, you guys, work with me on that. It works in Bartik. It works in Olivero. It doesn't work, it doesn't work on the OEmbed external videos. It just works on remote video. So it's really simple. Um, you can, with Acid Injector, you can define it uh, by page, user role, content type, vocabulary. You can require all conditions or any condition. So it's really, really cool. I'm just shocked that none of you admit to you. Maybe it's, you're just not admitting to it, I guess. So what does that look like? Well, if I go back to my site, uh, actually, if I go to the Drupal Hotel, I think I have a video at the bottom. Yeah. Sorry about the smiling face. I just did a... Uh, 
a video on the ten, seven new features for Drupal 10.1. Um, I produce a, a weekly OS tip video uh, at YouTube. OS, if you just Google OS training, OS tips, you'll find them. They're not always Drupal. They make me do Joomla sometimes and even WordPress. But 90%, 95% of them are Drupal. Um, so if you've ever embedded a remote video, what does it look like typically, right? It's a tiny little thumbnail. This CSS takes care of it, and it looks great. It's 100% responsive for the size of the area that it's embedded in. And it obviously plays at 100% as well. So that's a simple fix. Uh, you can take that CSS as a foundation and figure it out for whatever theme you're using. Um, the, consist the, the way Drupal brings remote video to your page is consistent. You've just got to figure out your CSS for your particular theme. Unless somebody's overridden that, of course, well then, again, you still have to figure it out. Did you, um, did you do that in the CK editor or did you do that? No, this is a field. Okay. Uh, in the CK editor, no. I don't, th well, hang on. That's a great question. Sorry, I'm not used to using a trackpad. Monday Jazz. I don't think this is going to work. Well, I know that's not going to work. Um, I don't think the CSS is going to get applied in there. Oh, it did. Yes, it does. It gets applied in the, in the body field as well. Now, that is not available because it's Monday Jazz from last week. But, yes, it does. Thanks for asking. I wasn't sure about that. Any other thoughts or questions? I was going to say with the, I guess in lieu of the asset injector, um, at the time we used like a, just a block. We just do the source code of CSS, Ooh. we just place the block. Okay. It's a very similar option. To so, uh, and here's, again, I do a lot of training for government and big business where an editor wouldn't have the ability to do that. Mm -hmm. They don't let them use the full HTML uh, text mode. So they've got, they're stuck with a version of the basic, and they can't inject CSS or anything into the source. So that's why I went with this route, in my training at least. But yeah, that's absolutely valid for sure. Just depends on your access to the site, right? You're always better to do this at the theming level, right? The theming layer, just saying. But of course, not everybody has access to that. Any other questions? You guys are a fun group. Thanks. All right. Let me go back to my steps page because I will never remember. The next one is really interesting. So you know that remote video only supports YouTube and Vimeo, which honestly, that's pretty much enough. But if you want to get a TED video, for instance, into your Drupal site, you can't do it. Well, you could, but it's convoluted. And again, you'd have to have full HTML access and blah, blah, blah. There is a fantastic module called OEmbed Providers. OEmbed Providers allows you to literally go and get video from anywhere on the internet that provides an OEmbed source. So you download and install the module as usual. And when it's installed, you'll come to Media and OEmbed Providers. <coughs> you don't need to do anything here. Let me see if I can make this bigger. There we go. All right. On this first general page, this is provided for you. Don't change it. You're good to go. Leave it exactly the way it is. On custom providers, again, you can add your own OEmbed provider if you have one from another source. Or you can create a bucket. And the buckets are awesome. And I apologize, it's called Orb. I messed up the name. But here's the problem. This is a bit of a quirk with Drupal. Drupal has a character limit on field names. Did you know that? Well, this one will really mess you up fast because it adds a ton of junk to the field name uh, when you build out this bucket. So I wanted to say ORV and, you know, spell check, autocorrect, change to ORB, and I didn't notice. Now, I can change the label, 
right? It's the machine name that's the trick here. So I can change, once I've updated the, or got the machine name, two or three letters. That's about all you can manage. Maybe four letters here. If you type in other remote video and click save, you'll get a massive error because Drupal can't save that field. But keep it short and then rename it later. And then look at all of the other providers you have. Flickr, Fox Sport Australia, good day. Uh, Getty Images, Giphy, Gloria TV. I don't even know what Gloria TV is, but Ted. Now, in the older version of this, all you had to do here was ch choose the ones you wanted and choose YouTube and Vimeo. And then you could ignore the remote video um, me media type. Can't do that anymore. That <laughs> really threw me for a loop the last time I taught this because it, it broke. By default, you must create a new media type to use this module. It's no big deal. You just have to do it. You can still choose YouTube and Vimeo and just use this one if you want. And actually, that would be my recommendation. Um, choose YouTube, Vimeo, and anything else, and then just ignore the remote video media type. But again, for the purposes of this illustration, I've just chosen TED. All right? So now I have a bucket called Other Remote Video. Machine name Orb. <laughs> All right. So what do I have to do? Well, structure, media types, add media type. And when I add a media type, I select the other remote video media source. So yeah, this is a bit of a pain. Now I've got two remote video sources. But again, if you chose Vimeo and YouTube, you could just ignore remote video. And when you have that, of course, you've got manage fields, manage form display, manage permissions. By the way, isn't manage permissions awesome now that it's here? <sighs> That's one of the best changes they made in the last year. Anyway, um, again, your machine name here needs to be really short because uh, this particular module just adds a ton of stuff to it. So I said ORV, and then I updated the label later on. Now, when I go into content, um, and did I put it in the Drupal hotel? Hotel video, nope. I think I did it in the article content type, I'm sorry. Nope, <laughs> shoot, I hate it when I do that. I must have done it in the hotel content type. Now I can choose between remote video and other remote video. And when I choose other remote video, of course, I can add anything. You can see allowed providers is TED, and I've got a couple of TED videos all ready to go. One downside, the hack or the CSS that makes your videos responsive doesn't work with this. In fact, it breaks it. It's a mess and I've not actually gone back in and figured out all the CSS for this one, it does not get embedded the same way as the core remote video field. It does its whole own thing that's not an iframe, uh, that is an iframe, but it's done differently. So if you have that CSS hack, yeah, this is not, it, it looks pretty bad. Well, here, I'll, I'll just show you what I mean. Um, but hotel, body, save. And yeah, the video doesn't even show up because it's, um, it's broken. That's really weird. Hang on. That just drives you nuts. Just a minute. I'll tell you not. See, it's right there. Hotel video. And it's not showing up. I don't know why. So that's the CSS doing that, not the content, not the not the media type. So if you require something beyond uh, Vimeo and YouTube, that's, a, that's the only option you've got, uh, other than just embedding the embed code somehow. All right, adding new media types. Uh, we just did that. 
you do that for other remote video. Another option would be uh, hero images. Um, I've had people say, I want to keep my hero images separate. All right, so create another media type called hero image. So you can separate them out. Easy peasy, right? So swap <coughs> new media types, add new type, add the fields, you're good to go. In, um, entity usage and updating the media view. So I want to finish up because we are out of time apparently. Entity usage is a really cool module. And it is going to be here under... Uh, da, 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 da. <coughs> All right. The entity usage module allows you to track the usage of any entity. So I just said media. Keep it nice and simple. And it's going to track everywhere media is used. So when I go over to edit a media item now, so again, I'm going to edit Big Ben, I have a new tab called Usage. This is worth the price of admission today. This is the number one request I get about media in Google. This is actually real, and it works. Unlike the files page, I know exactly, I know exactly where every usage of a, of a media item is. And, and this works PDFs, any media entity, right? And you'll note, look, it's not just content, it's also taxonomy. Anywhere that media item is used is gonna show up here on this page, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. Now, last thing, because I know we're out of time, let me show you the last thing I did here. I love the fact that you can edit any view in Drupal, don't you? Take a look at this view. I got rid of the language, because this is not a multilingual site, and I added the ability to filter by keywords. Then I added the media keywords field here, and a link to the usage. Now, in the usage module, in the next version, that's actually going to appear under the drop down here. There will be edit, delete, and usage. It's not there yet, so I made it a link to the usage, which literally just goes over to the edit the the edit page for the media item. So let's just quickly see how I did that, and then we'll take some questions. Obviously, um, here for keywords, that's really simple, right? I just added the media keywords taxonomy field. I added it as a filter and exposed it. And so now I can filter by any keyword, and boom it filters it instantly. I can add multiple keywords, um, Drupal or Beach. The trick with that is you have to turn off or have to make, put a check mark in reduce duplicates. That's really the only trick there. The usage link is a little bit more interesting. And again, I actually created a, the, a link for that using the ID, the media ID field. So I added the media ID field and then I rewrote the results as a link to media, the token, uh, MID, edit usage, and it takes me right to that page. And so I've got an updated view that is now a heck of a lot better for a content editor looking for media. Keywords, usage, the ability to add a spot where the scale and crop is gonna work with all of the, Im uh, the image styles that I created. And is it a full-fledged, uh, widened style media manager? No, it's not. Could you make a full-fledged, widened style media manager in Drupal? Yeah, you absolutely can. If you really want to add all of those fields for exposure and that other stuff that Widen does really well, you could keep going. But for the average Drupal site that wants to use Drupal as their media manager, this is, I think, this is super helpful. So that's it. That's the long and short of how I would build out a digital asset management system using Drupal, culminating with a much better view into the media itself. Oh, by the way, I also turn on the name field, the title field for each media item as well, because I think that's way better than having the, the actual um, 
image name, for instance, in the field here. All right, I think that's everything. Let me just double check. Oh, again, bulk upload. Obviously, I've got that here. This only works, uh, oh, it works with all of them. But again, you can't add your, um, you can't add your keywords. You can just uh, add your, um, what's the, uh, alt text. You can only add alt text as you um, do mul uh, multiple media for the bulk uploader. I, I prefer, it's weird, I prefer the one that's in the listing over the other one, but again, there we go. Um, and workflows. Questions, comments, did I miss anything? Any great ideas? I kind of was reading the problem the other day where we talked about serving video from anywhere. Yeah. What about local posted video? Yeah, I hate I hate local video. Yeah, but we have we have a faculty member who's like, oh, I want to upload my video. Sure. Yeah, it's not like it's not going to look like YouTube. <laughs> no. Yeah. So the again, here's what I tell people: the only time I would ever recommend uploading actual videos when you want to use it as the background in a slider. So Provis, which is from Promit Source and um, uh, Site Studio, allow you to do video backgrounds. That's the only time I'd ever upload a video to locally. Because then you can manipulate it with CSS and fit it and stuff like that. Provis is a really interesting page builder from Promit Source. So it, it's a lot cheaper than Site Studio. It's nowhere near as good, but it's cheaper. A lot cheaper. Any other? Ha, uh, yeah. There's a kind of a common. Uh, scenario where uh, the difference between the media library and Entity Browser. Mm. You familiar with the? I'm not as familiar with Entity Browser anymore. I kind of gave up on that when when the Media Manager came out. But go ahead. Uh, one thing I guess that Media Library is kind of lacking is that, at least in my recent experience, um, that you can't edit fields that are attached to the media entity directly from like the node where you're embedding it. Right. Whereas with Entity Browser, it actually loads the entire media form, so it yeah. allows you to make those changes yes. yeah. right, directly from there without having to go to right. the manager. That's a, that is a great point, yeah. Um, again, something like Site Studio with Acquia, they've done a lot of work that they don't release back because they're Acquia. Uh, they've actually fixed that. I'm looking so, forward to seeing like that. Yeah. Yeah, that'll be great. Um, if you're interested in the media manager at all, you should join the media Slack channel. Uh, boy, the conversation there is enlightening. Mm -hmm. And they're talking about all this kind of stuff in there. Mm -hmm. um, that's how I knew that they're looking at um, uh, doing the, you know, click and drag and resize the images. That, that stuff's all being discussed in the, in the Slack channel. Really smart people in there. I am not really smart. I just pull stuff together. Um, bulk media upload can do that. A, well, I guess it really can't. You have to multi-select when you do that. Yeah, the drop zone. The drop zone. Um, yeah, let me grab some pictures here. Whoops, Drupal 10 material. Yeah, all you can do is like multi-select, click upload at this point. I don't there. I don't know the the other bulk uploader may do that. I'm not really sure, but uh, I, li I just like this one because it's core. There's no additional libraries needed, and for me this works. So, what is this one called? Um, it is. Media library bulk upload. Oh, I don't know why this just. This is the weirdest thing, isn't it? There it is. Media library bulk upload. If you go to my blog, imrodmartin.com, 
and go to the first blog post on that page, you can download these slides. And when the video is available, I'll post the video there as well, although it'll be available everywhere. So. <coughs> Other thoughts? We're a little bit over time. I really appreciate you guys hanging out. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate that. Yeah, this is this is pure fun for me. All right, site builders, go forward. <laughs>